Hi, so let's talk about transposons. Okay, in the 1940s, Barbara McClintock discovered the transposons. And she did this while studying the Indian corn. And this is how it looks like. So this is the corn, and these are the kernels here. And the strange thing to note is that within this corn, okay, because um, in the corns are mostly selfers, they they fertilize themselves. So although these are seeds, well, they are more or less have the same. They more or less have the same genes. All right. So within similar genotypes, you can have different phenotypes, which is really strange because usually when you have the same genotype, you will have one phenotype, one genotype, one phenotype. And if these are homozygous, okay, if you have the pigment, this one both lacks the pigment, both alleles lack the pigment. And these are, um, these are the heterozygous. So they either mix or, you know, yeah, they mix around like that. Either some parts have, some parts don't have, or they mix properly, like homogeneously. Then this is incomplete dominance, this is co-dominance. So these are all different genotypes for different phenotypes. And pheno oh, by the way, phenotypes are oh, observable traits. Like, actually, mostly appearances, like these. They are observable. Yeah, so for this corn, you can see that within the same genotype, you have different phenotypes, and that is a bit strange. Um, there are some mechanisms to explain this, like lionization and epigenetics. Uh, we're not going to discuss this in the video, but just for your info, lionization, because of um, the X chromosome inactivation, you have cats like these, like calico cats, which will produce fur with different spot, different color on different spots of their bodies. And for the epigenetics, these are the aguti mice. And they have also fur with different color at different spots of their body. So, if you're interested, um, there are links in the description box for you to click. Yep. Uh, so, the reason why this happens, as she found out, is because of transposable elements. Or transposons. Well, they're about the same thing. And we abbreviate it here as TE. Okay? And... Um, well, they're also known as jumping genes, but this is not really accurate, just for you to note. Uh, because for them to jump, they have to be autonomous, which is they have to make their own enzymes and stuff to jump. And most of the T's in our body, like actually in our bodies and everywhere else, they are not autonomous. They are broken, yeah, and they can't jump. Okay, but with the help of the autonomous ones, they can jump. But that will be discussed in the next video. Okay, so how do jumping genes explain this? Okay, now, with the same genotype, we have to account for four different phenotypes. The pigmented ones, which are these. The pigmented ones with unpigmented spots, like um, this one here, where it's black, but yellow, yellow um, patches. And the unpigmented ones, the yellow ones, and the unpigmented ones with the pigmented spots, like um, this one. Yeah, yeah, they're yellow but with the black spots. All right. So to make the pigment, it's very simple. You need a gene. We call it the color gene. Okay. So if you have this gene, you're pigmented. That's all. But halfway through during development, okay. Let's say later on. Later on, in some cells. The jumping gene jumps straight into your into your color gene here. So what happens is it jumps and lands here, right in the middle of this. This will disrupt the color gene. Disrupted color gene. Uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. So once the color gene is disrupted, then those cells with the disrupted color genes will start becoming, well, unpigmented. They'll be yellow. So because of the way plant cells divide, all right, if one gene, well, sorry, one cell out of all the other pigmented cells becomes disrupted, it'll become unpigmented and it starts dividing like that. 
and once they divide, they stay put. They just, you know, they just make a new cell and they just divide off with the cell wall. So, yeah, that's why. Over time, they will gather and it becomes big enough for you to see. It will form a spot or a patch. That, yeah, big enough for us to see. Some are very big, some are like not so big. Yeah, and all that. Okay? So, of course, during this, this process, it can jump out again. And that explains this one. Okay, so, before, let's say within um, the first few endosperm cells, endosperms are the, the cells that make up the bulk of the kernel. Okay, let's say within there, it jumps in already. And it stays put. It just stays there forever. Then, your whole entire kernel will be unpigmented because this thing is already disrupted and because it's disrupted it will be unpigmented the whole kernel because you can't produce the the black purple whatever right? what, what, what color yeah pigment but during development this transposon can jump out also so later on later on in some cells as usual not not the whole thing they don't jump out all the time like all at one go because this is um this is this jumping in and jumping out is random and independent so just because one cell jumps in one cell the te jumps out doesn't mean all the other cells have to jump out yeah it is like you know random thing that happens so if it jumps out then you get back your color gene here um, it kind of leaves something behind, but uh, doesn't really make a difference because it's not that big. Yeah, compared to the gene itself, and your cell can solve it by splicing. It will leave some some um, some sequences behind, but not a really big deal. I mean, the whole thing is big, but the things that it leaves behind are not that much of a big deal. So anyway, we'll just ignore it for now. You get back your color. So within these cells, the same thing. If they're colored, then as you divide, it will form a little color patch here, which is what you see over here. Yeah, these are the colorful patches. I mean the the colored patches. So this means that the T induced mutations are reversible because they can jump in and jump out. So that is an important thing to note. And that is how it explains um, this weird phenomenon. Yeah, and so in the next video, we will be looking at how the mechanism of this jumping. Yeah, of how it jumps in and jumps out of places. Okay? Yeah, thanks for watching. Bye!